Hello YouTube, Chance Paladin here. Um, I wanted to start um, reading my book to you guys, and um, if you liked it, maybe you could go buy it. And um, I'm I'm way I'm way far off from being able to professionally record like an audiobook for this. I don't have the right mic. Um, I just have a mic for, for gaming. I don't have, like, one of those mic stands with the screen and stuff yet. But, uh, anyway. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Chance Paladin here. And I'm gonna read, um, this for you guys. And, uh, Pacific Northwest Affliction 1, Recycled. Which is a novella that I wrote. And, if you guys like it. Um, I already said that. Um, um, oh, if, oh! If you guys like it, um, maybe I'll do I'll do more of these. Um, but you gotta let me know. These aren't super long books. Um. Anyway, I'm just gonna do my best, and so hopefully this uh, gets some views. And please go check out my book. My books. I have three of them. Um, and I put the little picture up here so you can check in and see it out, uh, see how to search for it and stuff. It's also available on Create Space. If you have a Kindle Unlimited, uh, it's actually free. Uh, all three of them are free if you have Kindle Unlimited. Otherwise, uh, audiobooks are two ninety nine, two nine or sorry, one ninety nine. Um, and the paperbacks. Um, I think the paperbacks are all under five dollars. Uh, paperback's really expensive, though. Sorry about that. Um, I, I actually make almost nothing off those. I, I try to keep them affordable. Since since they're so small, they're kind of more like, I guess, a collector's item or something. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I'm rambling. Sorry, I've, I, haven't been doing, I haven't been doing well. But I really wanted to do this, so... Um, it, uh, the... Based on, on how I do this is going to be how much time I have and, and whether or not I get a lot of feedback. So um, leave it uh, down in the comments below if you like this. And please, 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 uh, if you can, uh, go go buy them. The Kindle versions are all DRM free. So you can put them on whatever you want. So, all right, we'll get started. Uh, oh, on the back of the book. It says, Do you remember where you were when the lights went out? Do you remember when the collapse finally reached the tipping point? When it let everyone know it couldn't be ignored anymore? When denial wasn't going to be an option any longer? I'll never forget where I was. I was out for a walk because my cat wouldn't let me sleep. That's how it all started for me. In the dark, in the cold, just trying to make it through the night. A night that seemed to never end. And, um, I'll, uh, put a link up also so you can see the, the introduction to the three, the three books that I have out so far. Because I have a YouTube video just for those that explains it more, but we're just going to jump right into it because I've already rambled for too long. Like I said, I, I just haven't been doing well, so been really hard for me to do too much of anything lately besides work on my books so all right uh recycled uh, Pacif uh pacific northwest affliction book one version 1.1 an urban survival story by chance paladin copyright 2017 thank you to my wonderful wife who i love very much for being patient with me even at my most difficult of times, and for my cats for not walking on my keyboard too much while I'm trying to write these stories for ye fantastic readers. Forward. The following story, the beginning of a series, takes place in a fictional place in the Pacific Northwest in the not-too-distant future, a place that used to be okay to raise kids in. At some part, at some point, 
through equal parts indifference and let someone else handle it while we go to work, we ended up in a society where values that used to keep us safe are quickly becoming perceived as the enemy. People's inadequacy is being projected on everyone else, and what used to keep us independent has become antiquated. What used to be passed down from generation to the next takes ten times the effort to learn, nearly from scratch. I'm tired of having to learn and rebuild important stuff from scratch because some things once lost might take a very long time to rebuild again. Chapter 1 Getting Up There I was one night, unable to sleep like usual. My cat, Spooky, wouldn't stop playing with a plastic bag on the floor. I guess she liked the noise it made. I'd moan for her to stop half asleep, and she would, politely as always, waiting for a protective cocoon of limbo to show around my aura before she would start pat-patting the plastic bag again, thinking that was good enough to not bug me. Wrong again, cat. You know I sleep late. Third or fourth time, and I gave up trying to reason with the cat. I can't be mad at her. She's special. She's actually had a rougher life than I have. She came from one of those cat halfway houses that pretend like they are saving cats when really they don't take care of them at all. Most people realize later that those places are some of the worst living conditions. She had very little care given to her, and I'll spare you the least humane of the details because I know a lot of people can't stand to hear I see this suffering of animals. Suffice it to say, she suffered worse trauma than any cat I've ever seen. This is probably because it was a confined and almost deliberate neglect, if you can imagine such a thing done to an animal that knows nothing but unconditional love in its heart. All of her special needs had been completely ignored, and through neglect and then through neglect and indifference, categorically abused. So now I'm up, and the cat is confused, then that I am up at a weird hour and forgets all about pat-patting her plastic grocery bag for the second night in a row and just sits there. I put my glasses on and check her food and water and of course it's okay. She hardly eats anything and her water is more for having a staring constant contest into and then splashing everywhere. Yeah, I know. Anyway, you understand. She's a special cat. She seems to actually be upset at the bag at this point, like she isn't going to come into the other room now. This would be unless the bag is moved, so I pick up the bag and stuff it into my pocket and combine it with the other similar bags that I keep together. With barely the shred of a thought of what the bag could be doing in the room to begin with, I remember that yet again I'd been having those weird stupid dreams about having a crappy job that I don't like. This was at least the third or fourth night in a row, these awful dreams about a manager that's never happy with the hours I put in. Nobody ever gets challenged on their hours, only me, no matter what I work, except the manager is close to two hours late every day and takes nearly a two-hour lunch. They also eat at their desk while emailing and socializing, then leave close to two hours early. Throughout all of this, they still find time to chew me out on my hours every Friday like clockwork before they, of course, again, leave early. I have the same dream every night, and I can't shake it, so maybe it's time for a walk. I put my normal going out clothes on, my hat, flashlight, sidearm, blades. What? Don't tell me you think I'm some, some kind of hipster that thinks everything is sunshine and butterflies. Give me a break. I make my own safe space. If you think things are fine out there, you haven't been paying attention, and probably on purpose. I'm also not going to pretend like I'm going to change your mind here in the story, so let's just move on. Anyway, so I take everything and stick it in my, in its proper concealed area, and then I throw an extra mag in my pocket. Then I throw on my walking slippers and a hoodie, check on my pockets and belt for the important bits, and with everything in place, I go out into the inky yonder. Chapter 2. Going for a short walk. First, getting out the door, I lock the door. Got to lock the door, you know. But if everything's fine, I bet you I'll just leave your doors unlocked, don't you? And your car doors while you're at it. Oh, you locked them? Weird. That's what I thought. Well, some people actually do leave their cars unlocked. 
and they just get all their stuff stolen and find people living in their cars, then they act all surprised. That is if lightning can't hit twice, they'll do it again, and then their stuff will get stolen again, and then they complain to everyone again, and everyone feels sorry for them again. So I lock my stuff up, and so should you. Anyway, looking out into the world, it was a little drizzly out. Sort of drizzle, sort of fog, just the way I like it. The two infrequent street lamps were the only motivation to keep it going, really. The flashlight staying in a lower pocket of my khakis in case anything got too dark or needing to flag someone down or see in a dark place or whatever. So I just go in with the natural light and letting my eyes adjust. Everything was nice and quiet for a few blocks, and then I realized something. The further away I then realized something, the further away I got from my home. I realized that I hadn't eaten anything before I left. I wasn't feeling weak yet, but I decided to err on the safe side. I started heading towards the 24-hour convenience market, and that was nearby to pick up some Zorn bars. They were my favorite because they kept my sugar, protein, and carbs all at a nice balance rate. Instead of giving me a big jolt, only to giving me a big crash that left me feeling even worse than before. As I was thinking about how great a nice tasty graham cracker and peanut butter zorn bar would be, and as my energy and sugar levels were definitely starting to go down, there was something else I started to notice out of my peripheral. The lights, not all of them mind you, but some of the street lights behind me had started to blip out. It wasn't so many to where it'd be an issue for cars, but enough to cause pedestrians to need a flashlight because the curbs and such would be completely invisible now. The way forward seemed to have most of the lights lit, as well as I could see the brightest heaven convenience store and gas station lights glowing off the sky and everything else a few blocks away. I ignored my instincts, screaming at me to turn around and go home, and instead headed forward to get some nutrition before the walk back. As I started to get near a block away from the friendly mart, I could hear several sirens in the distance. I turned behind me to try to angle my ears in the right direction, only to see that all but maybe two streetlights had ceased to function. I assumed the siren sirens were headed in the direction of the cause, and that the power company would be closed behind, and that things would be resolved soon. I finished my way, heading towards the late night market, and as I got to the doors, the sirens did not hold position or shut off. I stopped to listen to where they went as they faded too far in the distance to hear any longer. As I pondered that, it was time to enter the mini market. Chapter 3 Late Night Market My night vision was having a lot of trouble adjusting to the light from the gas station. It was too bright, even for the afternoon sun in the summer. I squint to see through the semi-transparent doors, because prior to opening, I can only see blurs due to the smudged-up glass for the latest promos. I opened the doors to see and hear better, wondering why there would be extra people in here when I saw no extra cars outside. There was a stressed-out man inside yelling and swinging his arms at the clerk, something about how it was all the clerk's fault that all the lights were burnt out but his, and how his religion must be attacking us or something. I had no clue what on earth religion the clerk could possibly be, but regardless, I quickly walk over to stand next to the clerk. The aggressive guy immediately didn't like this, but didn't know what to do. He looked between us about five times and then walked out the door with a jingle as he repeatedly shook his head. I heard a click-click and looked down and across as the clerk declocked A357 and put it back under the counter. Thanks, that mess would have sucked, he said in a half chuckle, as his well-masked adrenaline started to wear off. I thought to myself... That is sad that the store clerks have to deal with this as much as they have to. That idiot must have been new to the area because the last group that tried to rob this place didn't do very well. All three left in bags. Turns out that clown masks and hoodies aren't super great at stopping horndery critical defensive 125 grain ammo traveling at 1500 FPS. 
in order for shotguns to work, you have to do things. Like have the safety off and have a shell in the chamber. All important details that people don't think about when they aren't expecting an actual fight. No problem, I said back. Mentioned that I was just glad to help and that I was here to get some snacks. Clerk said I could help myself to a few things on the house, but I wasn't having any of that. I grabbed a box of five Zorn bars, graham cracker, and peanut butter, of course. I also looked, and they had my favorite flavor of 20-ounce Monstar energy drink. The green tea kind, which is stupid hard to find. It's the rejuvenating kind that doesn't have sugary boost at the front, but doesn't have the sugary crash at the end either. You quickly get a nice alert feeling, which I really like. Plus, it's refreshing and doesn't leave me feeling dehydrated. I'd also seen these water packet things that were sort of water, but were in a weird flexible bladder sort of thing that's hard to explain, so I grabbed some of those also. I also thought to myself that I haven't changed the batteries in my flashlight in a while, and with that darkness stupidity outside. Right then, there was a crash that sounded like it came from the direction of the gas pumps outside. The friendly Mart clerk shouts to me to go out the back immediately as he simultaneously slams down on the emergency shutoff valve over and over. I tried to explain to him that I hadn't paid yet. He yelled, go now, pay later, and then rushed out towards the front, towards the collision. Chapter 4. Parking Lot I can't really decide why I chose to exit out the back, like he said. I want to tell myself that it was because he was in charge and that he was showing solid leadership. I might be overthinking it, though, and it really hurts me to think this way, though, but I think the real reason is that it was more like he was the captain and that was his ship. His shutoff valve wasn't working, and that was the only other... And the only other chance was the secondary shutoff. There would be no turning back from the secondary shutoff, and having a second person with him would be meaningless. Well, unfortunately, the secondary shutoff also failed for whatever reason. He didn't throw his life away, he just took a calculated risk that he knew he had to take alone. Wherever he believes he goes, where he passes on, I know he now knows he did the right thing. And I respect the heck out of him for that. The building went into exit only mode. Not that I wanted to go back in anyway. And I got as far as away as I could as the ancillary explosions started. Once I got to the corner of the block, I looked in the three available directions to try to see if this streetlight situation was the same or if maybe all lights would be on. I was really hoping for an easy circle around so I could just get home. I didn't want to stay around the corner store and try to explain how I had unpaid goods on me amidst this chaos. I couldn't offer any help anyway, and it isn't like emergency services were going to give me a ride home. Well, obviously they were going to be busy, and I noticed no sirens anyway. It didn't make any sense, and I waited longer, and no sirens. <sighs> More explosions from behind me, and despite the building being half a block away, it was starting to be quite uncomfortable. I looked down the three roads again, trying to focus on the street lights specifically. One of the streets wasn't even a through street. It was just more of a residential back alley. It had a no through street sign, and it didn't appear to go very far, and it just passed by electrical junctions. So that only left me with two options. The options are down to two streets now, and one of the streets had nearly half of its lights out already. I checked all the directions in the intersecting roads so that I could, and no cars, and no people anywhere, and crashed to the only feasible road I could hopefully find a way home. I could to hopefully find a way home. And still no sirens. Chapter 5. Taking the Long Way Back As soon as I stepped on this road, I definitely remember feeling more positive. Having the lights on was nice, being audibly and physically away from the fire and explosions was nice. I remember taking a minute to really collect myself. 
I still had the goods from the corner store in my hand, and the shock and chaos. I got this far without even realizing it. I would it would look I would look really weird if anyone noticed. I unpacked all but one of the energy bars from the box and put them in my cargo pockets, shoving half the remaining bar in my mouth and beginning to chew. I folded the energy bar box up flat and stuffed it in my back pocket. Then I put the water bladders in each of my remaining empty cargo pockets as I had planned for them. And remembered to take my gun belt and cinch it up even tighter to compensate for the weight. I knew my belt could handle the additional weight. No problem. As I finished chewing the first half of my energy bar, I tried to gently shake my energy drink because it's supposed to be. But I didn't want to overdo it and then create a mess of noise. I turned it upside down and then right side up and tried to swish it around a little bit and open it as quietly as possible. It made a mean hissing noise like it was mad at me for not shaking it so it could explode and the hissing noise almost sounded louder than the hissing noise would have been. I took a sip to make sure my palate was staying evened out with the moisture and slammed the other half of the energy bar in my mouth and started on my way before I drew any attention. I started walking forward like I belonged there and shoved the energy bar wrapper in my pocket where I had stuffed the energy bar box. Out of my peripheral, I saw nothing move either to my left or right and went on my way. As I walked down the road, I was thinking to myself that I guess everyone was sleeping through the explosion fire and me standing here. Maybe when they didn't hear the sirens, they just assumed it was, wasn't was an emergency. What was wrong with people? Whatever, who cares? So, I went a block or two, sort of perpendicular to where my house would have been, hoping to make another 90 degree turn to be parallel with my street. I check block after block, and on every single street, the lights are out into pitch black. Here's the weird thing. Not only are the street lights out, but I noticed that about a block or two down, not only are the street lights out, but the house lights are out also, which makes absolutely no sense. I've traveled maybe six blocks now, sipping my energy drink as I went, heading towards an older industrial area. But I turned around to see if maybe it would be better to head back to the corner shop. Surely the gas company or someone would have been headed there by now, maybe to make sure no other gas lines got ruptured in the explosion. Shouldn't there be power companies out trying to fix this? Anyway, it doesn't matter because when I looked back about two blocks behind me, the lights were out. That meant there were four solid blocks of pitch black between any light and where that corner store was, or rather where it would have been. It wasn't even providing light technically since it was destroyed and the fire was physically around a corner about half a block. So ahead I could see where there was an intersection and a road that would have then again put me parallel with my street so that was a good sign. And in case you were wondering there was also enough light to get to that intersection. I continue to sip on my energy drink as I make my journey noting some ambient critter sounds as I pass what must have been a pond and or stream. I have no idea as I couldn't see anything past the light that the street lamps provided. I made it to the intersection and noticed there was a bus stop here and a garbage can. This would be a more reasonable place to actually take a few minutes without drawing suspicion. I took the energy bar wrapper out of my pocket and crumpled it up and set it in the garbage can with distinction. I noticed to myself that this garbage can was not overflowing and seemed pretty well kept. That was neat and made me happy. I distinctly remember having the idea to check the bus times and cross-referencing with my phone. Yes, the buses would have been running at that time, and no, the bus never came. I would have been there about two minutes before the bus was technically scheduled to arrive and stayed about five minutes after. On top of that, 
there hadn't been a single vehicle the entire night, besides the sirens I heard and whatever hit the gas station. If you're wondering why I never called anyone, I didn't have anyone to call at that time. It wasn't really an emergency other than it was really dark. I checked the news while my phone was awake. The news wasn't updating, but that wasn't unusual because news feeds use cell data, which took an eternity to update if it updated at all. Not only that, but the news hadn't been covering very much lately, and the news takes physical people to manually update. I took a sip of my energy drink, then checked Twitter, which I only have foreign people on, and as usual, they were up their own ass, judging everyone else on narrow-minded political views that made no sense while ignoring their own colossal implosions. I took another sip from my energy drink, then checked fake book after that for local happenings, but everyone was asleep. I checked the time, and this being the winter months, there was still around six hours of darkness left at least, so I needed to keep moving and find shelter still. There was no hope of just magically waiting till sunrise. The last thing I decided to check was the map, just to make sure I was still on the right track to the house, even though I already was. Sure enough, taking a turn here was going to put me parallel, and then in around eight blocks, and then another few blocks was going to put me in my subdivision again. Perfect. Chapter 6, Back on Track. Finally, heading down a street parallel on my own again, I scanned back 90 degrees to where I had come to see that, in fact, the lights were off no more than two blocks back, with a human-shaped shadow about 20 yards behind me at moderate speed. It wasn't an intercepting speed, but quite deliberate. I locked my hearing in that direction to the shuffles on the concrete, and scanned in the other direction 90 degrees, then behind, to see that both directions were nearly completely blocked out, including houses and street lamps, and thankfully no new shadows. I matched my speed to match the new situation, and then exceeded it enough to put a comfortable distance between who had emerged behind me and then headed in my predetermined direction, only to narrowly miss another shadow forming from darkness off a of grassy grassy patch out of the woods. I headed across the street where I knew it would certainly turn from forest to fully industrial and hope there wasn't another group there as well. I'd obviously disturbed one of the indigenous homeless groups, what I, which I didn't mean to do. I didn't have a problem with them, but the way they just sneak up without saying anything has always frustrated me. I hated the feeling... I hated... I hated feeling captive to them also once they initiate, so I've never felt it's worth the risk to seek audience when potential confrontation can be avoided. I made it about half a block before I realized I didn't hear the pair of shuffles anymore, and turned around to see nobody there and figured they must have gone back to their shelter and solution for surviving this event. A part of me regretted not stopping to talk to them, but another part of me reminded me it was just as possible that they were off their meds and could have been trying to ambush me. As I started walking back down the road, I realized the rest of my energy drink had sloshed out in the brisk walk. As I checked to see how much the liquid got on me, I lamented having to immediately leap to the conclusion that people approaching me must always have ill intent. I put the now empty energy drink can in my jacket pocket where it fits snugly. As my heartbeat slowed back down to my version of normal, I wish we all lived in a society where everyone could just be happy and safe. But then I realized it was completely impossible and completely out of our control. All we could control was ourselves. And that was the sad grim reality. Every step I took and every dilapidated and decrepit building I passed was more irrefutable evidence that the failure of that of that very idea. Not that I had all the answers. In fact, just like so many other people that think about this, we only communally know a lot of what's wrong with no idea of how to make it right, except for to leave everything alone and just let it fail. A block or so down, I look behind out of curiosity to see now that the block behind me and back to the corner block and all adjacent blocks are in the dark, and I continue my pace forward, not fully looking ahead but looking to the sides of the buildings. 
I stopped to think to myself in front of a building with a triangle with arrows pointing at itself on, at all three angles, and I think to myself about three rules of society, which are war, peace, and revolution. And I think I think that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, so... Yeah, I hope you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I know I ramble, um, I know I haven't been doing good, but I've just been doing my best, and, um, let's see, we got, oh, we got through to chapter 7, which is, uh, page 17, out of 92 pages. So that means less than a quarter through the book, and that took about half an hour, so it would probably take be maybe a two and a half to three hour full audiobook, something like that. I mean, and I know it's not perfect, and I'm, I'm not perfect either. I'm just, I'm just a guy that's trying to do my best, you know, so, um, this isn't meant to, like, replace an audiobook that I do someday, or that I, you know, um, I just, I'm trying to, to keep people interested in the book, I, I would really like for people to read the book and give me feedback on it, I still haven't gotten any feedback from anybody that's read, read the books, so, I'm still tweaking things and stuff on them, but it's still, I mean, the books are like 99% there. Um, so, I, I really wish people would check them out. I don't really know what else to say for right now, except, um, I, I really hope you guys like it, and I'm gonna keep improving them, and tweaking them, and, um, I'd really, I'd really like feedback, and, um, not to wait for me to, to read all these, because I, I mean, if the feedback's really good, I'll keep doing it, but uh, the feedback has to be really good, and, um, but I really want, like, a professional, I want, I want to get them good enough to where, it, like, they'll be professional. I don't, I don't know how I would do that, because even in here, like, I, I mean, my stuttering is really bad. And, um, I can tell that I need to re-edit my first book a lot. Not Nothing that affects the reading, but things that affect, I don't know, maybe being able to talk. I have no idea. I don't know. But I've also re-edited book one like ten times. It's probably like 99.99%. Um, but I, I hope I hope people check it out. I really do. Like it, it, two bucks for an audio book, or free if you have Kindle Unlimited. All three of them are free. I don't know. I wish more people would check it out. But I think like what I've noticed is that there's millions and millions and millions of books out there now. But the thing is, like, I hung out at the book section of Fred Meyer. And oh my gosh, like the books are like eight, nine, ten bucks. Like if if you could get like an eighty, ninety, hundred page book, hundred and ten page book for like two bucks. Like wouldn't you do that? I don't know. That I mean to me that that whole thing's like crazy, but but thing is and the reason why I'm doing this is my friend's like, well, I don't have time to read audiobook, blah 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 blah. Um, 
But, I mean, the thing is, like, and he, he joked around, but, like, the second the second you do things on audiobook, they get pirated. Um, and even if you weren't going to make any money at all, you're really not going to make any money then. So... I wish I wish people would check my books out, and I wish there was a way to get them, get them promoted more. But I but I also at the same time want to clean them up more. There's just there's just so little time. Things are so screwed up right now, and there's so little time. That's been the hard part. So anyway, I'm going to cut this video, and then I'm going to start another video for something else. I'm going to do the cover art for book four. I'm going to switch gears, and I hope you guys will like that. So anyway, um, thanks for watching, and please check out my books, you guys. I worked really hard on them. I know they're not, like, amazing, like editorially speaking but I work so hard on these books they mean they mean so much to me so um, yeah anyway thanks for watching you guys I'll talk to y'all later bye